Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek Jain and welcome back to the Inflex TV tutorial series part three. In today's video, we're gonna understand if we are having a CSV file generated on any specific location in a regular interval, then the data which we are getting in those new CSV files from that particular location, how we can upload that into the Inflex TV. That is what we're gonna cover in today's video with the help of a Python Inflex TV client library. So just quickly do the recap. Uh, we have just covered so far like how and how we can set up, you know, Inflex DB version two with Docker, how we can use its basic feature, like I mean, how we can create a bucket, what is measure, measurement, what is tag, what is field. And then we just wrote a simple Python file where we can through Python, we can just, you know, push the data to the Inflex DB, right? So now we are going to just uh, add a little bit of complexity. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we gonna create a CSV file in any one specific location by a Python code, and then we're gonna read that CSV and put it in an Inflex TV. So what I have done is I have written this small Python code, and let me just quickly give you the walkthrough what this does. This is just a structure of my CSV. So it has only three fields. Uh, this is uh, the company name, and then the price of that company in a US market and the price of that company in a Japan market, right? So I'm init I initialize a company name uh, as a company A, and then, you know, price thousand, uh, you can just put this a thousand dollar or you can just say thousand yen. I don't know, I mean, whatever number you want to pick, it's up to you. It's just a way to just show you how you can, you know, put this data into the InflexDB when this particular Python file is going to keep generating your CSV file in a regular interval, right? And then, you know, I'm assigning a specific path where that CSV is gonna be uh, generated. So CSV path, if you just see the CSV path, it is actually my data sets and then pricing data. So you can see I have created this in my left pane, that data set, and then we have a pricing data. Right, and then I'm generating this file based on the iteration, right? So if you just see, I'm using i as a variable for the first file, it is gonna be zero. And then at the end, I'm just, you know, incrementing by one so that once the next iteration comes in, that file name is gonna be changed. Here, if you just see, uh, all I'm doing is just opening up the CSV file, writing a header columns based on what header columns we have for these three fields. And then here, I'm just creating a, a dictionary uh, and that dictionary I'm being I'm using to just write that row, right? So it's very simple. Opening a CSV, create those test data, right, and just put it in that uh, CSV file. And you have to keep creating that file continuously. So if you just see here, I'm just you know randomly adding the value to the price for the US and the Japan Jap by using this random module, you know. And then I'm just waiting for two seconds, right? So let me just show you what happens when I just run this particular uh, file. So Python, I'm just gonna generate CSV data, right? So if you just see here, see the first file and the second file, right? Likewise, we're gonna keep getting, you know, files here, right? So that looks good. If you want, we can just reload from disk. Now you can see, we keep getting those files generated here, right? Now, <clears throat> The interesting part, how we can read the CSV file, get the data and put it in an Inflex TV. So that is what we're gonna do. So right, uh, let me just write a one Python program and let me just name send CSV data to Inflex TV. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy paste the some code which we have written in the previous, uh, part. Okay, so let me just copy this entire thing. Put it here. Okay, so we need this URL bucket and org, we can change this bucket. Uh, let's say we can say uh, rising data. Right, so we need this bucket and I'm just keeping rest of the stuff same. Uh, initializing the client, if you haven't watched, you can check my previous video and you can understand why we are generating, why we are creating this client object by using URL token and ORG. Then I'm just creating an object for the right API and this is the API which we're gonna use to write our data, right? So in last time we have used all these things uh, but we don't need them anymore. So I'm just gonna clean them up. Uh, all we need is uh, this 
Uh, so we can just clean up everything, right? That's pretty much it. Now we can just write our own code, how we can do that, great. So since now we are getting those uh, CSV file generated in a specific location. So the first of all, what we have to do, first we have to get the latest file, which is getting generated over there, right? So the latest file, so pick to pick the latest file, what uh, we have to do, we have to write a simple method and I have already written that and I'm just gonna say, Okay, uh, get latest CSV file from given location. And if you just see here what I'm doing, I just created this method, get latest CSV file. This is my path where I'm just gonna look at it. So uh, this is path is not imported. So we can do that from path live import Okay, this is the path. And what this path does is it actually help us to just you know locate any location. So this is my current directory and then data sets and then pricing data. This is where you know our uh, CSV files are keep generating, right? The next thing is the CSV file. So here what I'm doing, I'm just using a glow. Uh, this is again a module in Python, which is very heavily used. Uh, so I'm using a glo. What it does is if you just see here, it's actually just looking for that specific location and just searching for all the files which are having an extension as CSV. So another module which we need to use here is OS, right? Operating system related, which is actually going to just gives the path of all the CSV and then just C lab with this CLO, we are just extracting all the CSV file and then we are just getting okay, which is the maximum time generation. So here, if you just see, we are just getting the time at that time when this given all the CSV, which is being captured by uh, this uh, OS path, which one is having the latest creation time, right? So, and then we are just returning that latest file. So this is how this method is actually going to work. The next thing is what we're gonna do. Uh, I have just written that code as well because now what we have to do, we have to read through the entire thing and I can just quickly uh, walk you through what it is doing. So again, uh, this is uh, first, it is just uh, executing loop, infinite loop, because we are not giving any condition and while true. And then we are just, you know, executing our method, uh, which is nothing but a get uh, latest CSV to get latest, uh, CSV generated, right, in given location. If you just see this line of code is going to do that. And then I'm waiting for two seconds because I know, I mean, it is going to take some time. So I don't want to run this again and again. I just wanted to wait so that, you know, the previous code, this generate CSV can generate, you know, another CSV file. Now I'm using a Panda to just read the CSV. And for that, we need a Panda. So let me just import Pandas. I mean, you can use any CSV, whatever you feel like, uh, just use PD, right? So if you just see the code, I mean, just using a read CSV method to just read the file and then converting that into the dictionary. And then if you just see, we have these three fields, company, a price in US price in JP. This is what I'm just iterating through because, you know, once we convert that into dict, it's going to give us the list of our dictionaries. So I'm just iterating through, extracting the data. And this is the important point which we have to uh, understand. So in previous, uh, previous video, as I explained, we have to generate the line protocol. This is what we have to do. So we are using this point class where we are saying, okay, in, inside this uh, measurement, uh, we want to, uh, put our data and then we have to define tag which is uh, you know less frequently change field which is actually just a metadata of our data and then we have a field where you know we have continuously changing fields right so this is what we have to generate and if you just see the code it's very straightforward uh, so what we are doing we are just generating uh, creating this measurement which says load pricing data from csv and then the tag is the company name and if you just see here i'm generating this key value and this value is actually being replaced with the company name which we have extracted from the csv same thing, uh, I'm just adding a new uh, two fields. First one is the price in US and I'm just replacing the value of price in US from the CSV and same thing I'm doing for the price in JP, for the Japan price, right, for that company. And then if you see, uh, it's a simple thing. I'm just calling that right API method, feeding the bucket, you know, in which we want to put the data. And this is the record where we have the line protocol, uh, 
which actually explains, okay, this is the measurement, this is the tag, and these are the fields which I wanted to put it over there. Now, now the only thing which we are left with is to just create uh, the pricing data bucket, which is not yet there. So let's quickly create that. Okay, uh, bucket. And if we can create bucket, we can say pricing data, uh, never. Okay, so we got this pricing data. Cool. So we are generating our file. And now if I haven't made any mistake, then we should send CSV data. Okay, point is written. Okay, cool. It seems like it's actually writing the data. Okay, so let's come down here. Uh, we have put this pricing data, change our time range uh, past one minute, <clears throat> load pricing data, we can see. Now this is our measurement, which is load pricing data from CSV. We have two fields, price in JP, price in CS, uh, US, right? And we want our tag. So we can say our tag is company name. Okay, and then we can use this one. We can put our filter here. So we have chosen company and the price in CS price in JP, right? So now we can see uh, our data is actually being coming in, right? So this is how, what you can do, you can read your CSV, which is actually being uh, put on a one specific location, extract that data, you know, keep checking, uh, you know, for the latest file of the CSV and any given location. And then you can just, you know, keep, uh, you know, refreshing here and you can keep seeing this data. Okay, past one minute, we can say past five minutes. Uh, okay, keep it one minute, this looks good. And then again, you have a lot of options through which you can just see and in which, in which format, in which type of graph you want to see all these data points. Uh, you can see scatter, you can see heat maps, uh, whatever you want, right? This is just a single stat uh, graph, right? So all, all, all those things, if you want to see the raw data, you that also you can do. You can keep seeing all these things, right? So this is very helpful, very good. So this is how you can have your pricing data for two different countries for a given company, right? So if you have, uh, I think everything looks good. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna upload all these uh, Python file into the GitLab uh, repository. So you can just go through this, looks pretty straightforward. Uh, so if you have any uh, feedback or suggestion, uh, if you want me to explain this in a more detail, I can do that. But right now, uh, I don't want to extend that because whatever the code I have used here, it's very straightforward. If you have a Python background, then you can understand all these things very, very easily. Thanks for watching this. If you have any feedback or any suggestion, please feel free to put that into the comment section. And until the next video, stay healthy, keep learning a new thing. And as always, thank you for watching this.